Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 7th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a guest diary by Renato Marino about a rather interesting and persisting phishing attempt. Now, in this case, it all started out with the attacker actually being able to register a typo squatting domain for the Brazilian Santana Bank. The fake domain that they registered was only missing one single N. Now, uh, the victim then went to the mistyped URL and entered their username and password and possibly even a one-time password token. But apparently this last step didn't quite work. Now, typically these tokens are valid for a couple of minutes. So maybe the attacker wasn't fast enough in using the token or also possible that a second token was required to actually transfer money. Well, either way, the attacker actually called the victim and asked for a second one-time password from this login token. Now, the victim at this point got a little bit suspicious. The attacker did try to convince the victim to give up the information by using data collected during the initial login attempt. The attacker apparently also had additional information, for example, about recent transactions, the last four digits, of the social security number of the victim, which were either collected during the initial login attempt or using the initial token submitted by the user. Lucky for the victim, the victim didn't actually fall for uh, this phone call, but insisted in calling the bank back at their published phone number. That's of course what you always should do in a case like this. Pretty good here by the victim to not fall for this final step because uh, this is actually quite convincing if you have someone from your bank call you and the pretense here was that there were some fraudulent transactions that were being made and uh, the person that claims to come from the bank is actually able then to provide things like a couple of transactions that were made that day from that bank account. Last October, a malicious Twitter message triggered thousands of iPhones to call 911. I believe I mentioned this back then when it happened. And essentially, it caused a distributed denial of service attack against a couple of 911 centers. Luckily, or maybe not so lucky, given that not a large number of phones were involved, the attacks were somewhat geographically focused based on the accounts that tweeted the initial message. And even Worse, after the initial dial, the phone kept redialing at a very high rate. The Wall Street Journal now has a very long and uh, detailed article about this particular attack uh, with details about how it all unfolded and uh, how it was uh, finally actually being fought by having Twitter delete uh, these uh, respective uh, messages. However, up to this point, there isn't really a fundamental fix for this problem in the iPhone. The Wall Street Journal now reports that Apple announced in its next iOS update, they will make it more difficult to trigger a phone call from the iPhone. So if you then view a message like that, that could trigger a phone call, it will first ask for a manual confirmation. You will have to press a button to actually have the phone call go out. This appears like something that should have happened a long time ago. Not sure why they actually still allow JavaScript or other methods to automatically trigger a phone call without any user interaction. Nextcloud and OwnCloud are fairly popular systems that are forked from each other that allow you to host file sharing sites yourself, similar to what Dropbox or SharePoint does on the commercial, the cloud-based site. The nice part, of course, of hosting it yourself is that uh, you uh, keep control of uh, your files, uh, but of course, you also have to make sure that you secure these systems correctly. Nextcloud now came out with an interesting scanner that will verify the configuration 
of your own cloud or next cloud install. Now, what it does is it essentially runs a quick vulnerability scan against your site from its own website. So it only works for own cloud and next cloud instances that are publicly reachable, which of course are most at risk. Another option, of course, to share your files is to use one of these network disk storage systems that have become quite popular. A recent blog post looks closer at the Western Digital MyCloud and found in this particular system one login bypass, one arbitrary file write, 13 unauthenticated remote code execution bugs and 70 authenticated remote code execution bugs. So you definitely do not want to expose these devices to the internet. Now, as far as disclosure goes, the blog mentions that they did not disclose these bugs to the vendor because of prior experience with no action from this particular vendor. So as of now, these are zero days and I would recommend you disconnect your Western Digital MyCloud from the internet right now. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.